Hello everyone, my name is Alok Mishra and I welcome all of you on my YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss once more Peter Barry's best-selling and also very useful book Beginning Theory. In previous video I discussed how this book can be useful for anyone who wants to understand literary theories and literary criticism. But this video is going to be different. Today we will discuss how to use this book, how to make the most of this book and how a student pursuing BA and a student pursuing MA or any independent student pursuing literary theories can best utilize this book to understand most about literary theories and literary criticism. So, so in this video we will discuss the best methods, the best way to use this book and gain maximum advantage of the content that Peter Barry has provided. So let's get it started. Okay, so I am assuming that a student pursuing BA has no knowledge or very little knowledge of literary theories. So all those who, who are just starting to study literary theories, how can they utilize this book? So for students of uh, intermediate level in literary theories, I would suggest that they should go through this book thoroughly. That means right from the first page to the last page and they should never skip the preface and the introduction because right from the introduction you will start gaining knowledge, you will start gaining insights into the world of literary theories and criticism. So the first thing that you must keep in mind be a student is that you have to go through the entire book every single page, every single line. It may take some time, give it some time, I should rather say, take it slow, like uh, this book has about 320 pages. So you can take a month, you can take two months, but you should go through this book entirely. Once you do that, you will understand how beneficial that might be for your understanding of literary theories. So the first thing for BA students or anyone who is on, who is in the intermediate levels in his or her knowledge about literary theories, they should go through the book entirely. And then once you are reading the book, once you are going through the chapters, you should keep in mind there are certain things that the author has included in this book. There are sections, there are uh, lists of things a literary critic would do, there are examples, there are stop and think pointers where you need to stop and think what the author is suggesting. So you have to make sure that you utilize all those things provided by the author in the best possible way. I will show you an example. So for the example, Suppose someone is reading the chapter 4, Postmodernism. So the book starts rather frankly, rather straightforward way. What is postmodernism? What was modernism? So you get a question and you also get an answer. And then you get another question. So anyone would be inquisitive and right from the beginning the chapter is engaging. So in the very beginning, you know what the agenda is about, what postmodernism is, what modernism was. And then in the next section, after the introduction and introduction to all those main figures in the theory postmodernism, you get landmarks in postmodernism and there are certain names. And then we reach the stop and think section one. So in this section, you will find there are information that might be useful for your knowledge and also that might be something that questions your understanding thus far. And then this is, as I suggested in one of the earlier videos, this is the meat of any chapter in this book. Peter Barry has done one thing wonderfully. He has included a dedicated section in which he tells his readers what exactly a critic from a certain school of literary theory does. So in this section you will find in the fourth chapter what postmodernist critics do and you will find 
they discover postmodernist themes tendencies and attitudes within literary works of the 20th century and explore their implications the second thing is they foreground fiction which might be said to exemplify the notion of disappearance of the real in which shifting postmodern identities are seen for example in the mixing of literary genres and then there are other things that postmodernist critics do and then we move on to find postmodernist criticism an example so you find what it is and then some sections that question your understanding and then what are the popular figures associated with a particular school of theory and then what exactly that school of critics does and then there is an example so this is the pattern in every chapter for the beginners that is why i say this book is the best one to understand literary theories so after the example we move on to the final section where you will find selected reading so in selected reading you will find the names of the texts associated with particular theories and then some helpful books as well so if you want to deepen your studies if you want to further find intense information if you want to dive deep into the school of any theory that you want then you can use these books and you can get from different sources you can buy those books you can find e editions you can also join some literary groups where you can find digital editions of those books so in short what we can conclude is that for the beginners this book is useful and if they use it in the correct way that means give it some time take one month or two months read the book thoroughly use every section use examples to find out how exactly a particular theory can be applied on any text and then there are also certain stop and think sections that challenge your understanding that challenge your learning of any particular theory and then you can use this learning to apply critical experiments on certain texts on your own So for the beginners this is the method to use this book now we come to the second stage where someone with some prior information or knowledge about literary theories even say like basic information about literary theories how they can use this book for the maximum advantage suppose a student in MA or any independent student who has already completed MA now he or she wants to understand more about literary theory or just rekindle their love affair with literary theories so how they can use this book in the best possible way so in the next section we'll know that though this book is ideal for the beginners still there are certain sections certain chapters that may be helpful for anyone with prior information of literary theories for example now we navigate to chapter 11 stylistics and then we see that the chapter begins with a question a stylistics a theory or a practice so now if you have some prior information about stylistics then you can use this section to challenge your previous knowledge to challenge your notions about stylistics go through it and then we halt at a brief historical account from rhetoric to philology to linguistics to stylistics to new stylistics so the author has very carefully and wonderfully made an entire journey like peter barry has kind of carved out the journey of stylistics from something that it used to be previously or something that might be related even in far fetched way or in direct way to a stylistics rhetoric philology linguistics stylistics and new stylistics so you can use this sections to understand further about the theories that you already know and then after you understand the theory after you gain some more knowledge then you can start applying those things like first of all read the examples 
see how the author shows you a particular theory can be applied on any text and then you can use those learnings those ideas and apply certain theories on text of your choices so this is something that you will find only in this book what exactly a theory is meant to do when we interact with a text with certain preoccupation in our mind for example if we want to do an eco-critical reading of any poem by William Wordsworth. So how do we do that? No other book might tell you this thing in a lucid and a straightforward way that this particular book does. So for anyone, even with prior information or even with a basic understanding, or I will say even with a moderate understanding of literary theories, this book will be highly useful because it tells you how to apply a particular theory on any text. And then if you have some knowledge, if you understand the basic things, you can skip the introductory part, all those parts, or you can just pick out the sections that you want to read, or you can pick and choose the theories that you want to further understand. So all those who have some understanding of literary theories can be choosy about the book, but still they will find a lot in this book to use, to learn and to apply. Okay, so now we have discussed how a beginner can use this book, how an expert or a moderate or someone who understands the basic things about literary theories can use this book. Now we come to a little advanced stage. Suppose you know much about literary theories and you have more than enough information that a student might need and then you have crossed all those BA and MA examinations and now you may be pursuing a PhD or you may be teaching or you may be reading independently. You may be doing something but you still have your interest in literary theories. So do you have any use for this book? Yes, you have. What you can do is you can go to the end of uh, this book and you will find where do we go from here further reading so now you can have the access to the treasure trove of the things that the author may have read before writing this book or during writing this book so you can find information about books like Hans Barton's literary theory Gregory Castle's the black belt guide to literary theory Jonathan Kuller's Literary Theory, a very short introduction published by Oxford. So you get information about many books at the end of this particular book and you can use this information to find out more about those books, maybe buy some books or find some digital editions of those books and use that to further enhance your knowledge. So this book, my friends, is highly useful for anyone who has some occupation with English literature beginners, moderate, experts, and then all those who have done almost everything about literary theory to their understanding. So this is one of the most effective books that you can find on the topics of literary theory. And it has been very rightly titled Beginning Theory. So, so to end this video, I will say Reiterate once again, this is the book that is the best for the beginners, very useful for those with moderate knowledge of literary theories and very handy and useful in finding advanced books for those who have done almost everything in the world of literary theories to their own understandings. So friends, once again, Beginning Theory, very cleverly titled by the author because it starts your journey into the world of literary theories. It helps you navigate through those narrow and risky lanes of theories and then it guides you to further knowledge. So if you are thinking, still thinking about getting a copy of this book, no further thinking. Just go on, find your best website from where you buy or go to any bookstores near you and get a copy of this book and start learning literary theories as soon as possible. So we end this video with a positive note, Beginning Theory by Peter Barry, highly useful and effective book for anyone who want, wants to understand literary theories 
as beginner or who wants to further sharpen his or her understanding in literary theories or anyone who wants to find out better books or maybe broader books that cover broader aspects to read they can also use this book so this was it for today and we'll come with more books or more topics to discuss in further videos till then all the best have good time thank you